Africa. So it is 11.33, we'll go ahead and get started. So as we get this through, we're gonna start off with those handcuffs today. So just make sure that we're keeping that soft knee bent. Make sure we're tucking those hips underneath. Then our spine in neutral, so make sure we're not rounding. Make sure those hips don't move. We don't want them to twerk. We want to brace that core. Take those arms as far out as we can, away from that body. Rotating those hands, coming through. Elevate those elbows as high as we can. Rotate, thumbs come down, pull back. Still rotating, still trying to bring them as far away from that body as we can. Rub those arms. Rotate, keep feeling that chest on that way up if we're able to elevate that elbow. Should we feel those lats? Feel the back, that shoulder. Should we feel in all of that chest, shoulder as we go through it? So just make sure, remember those pinkies are what's leading the way. Try to really elevate and pull back. Let's go ahead and get five more. So there and back is gonna be one rep. Let's get five more. And just make sure that we're not, just to get a little bit further, we're not moving those hips. If we can't get very far, that's okay. Really just want you to challenge that rotation of that shoulder. Good. Once we end up with that fifth one, we're just gonna do a quick round of this because we do have some shoulder work and movement within that shoulder. So we're gonna do, we're gonna take your left hand and make a fist with it, you're gonna drive it through the ground. Lock that core, we're gonna brace, pull that chest out, arm is out, we're gonna come up. Rotate that palm away, come through, palms up the hip, come back with that back hand, palm, all the way through. So that shoulder's actually gonna wanna move with you just because we want to get that job done. Imagine you're pulling that down, up, rotate, through, and back. All right, so really keeping that tension, really focusing on pulling those shoulders down, so as I'm coming up with that elbow, I'm focusing on pulling that shoulder blade down into my hip, locking that shoulder blade down, pulling that hand in, and rotate, coming back up. Let's do three more on that arm, and then we'll switch sides. So just brace, squeezing, bracing that core, shoulders down and away. If you find a spot where you get stuck, just kind of work around it like a puzzle piece and then come back as close as you can to that center line. Good. So remember, once you get those extra few that we had talked about, those extra three, you're gonna get five on that other side. Just trying to get some movement. So if it's sticky right here, just kind of work around it, come back. If it's stuck by your ear, you're just thinking a little bit wider, that we're still trying to pull that hand closer to your body. That's gonna be that challenge. Good. Once we get those five, just like yesterday, we're gonna get some movement in that spine because we do have some moves today that are, require that mid back to work. So give me that mummy position, give me those closed fists. So we wanna keep that tension in those forearms, shoulders, we're gonna tension in the legs. So if I'm gonna push you over, you're trying to drive yourself through those glutes, quads, driving through, flex at the core. From there, you should feel that mid back already moving. Rotate, put it down, come back, bring open up that chest to the ceiling, rotate that shoulder down, crunch that side, come through, down, rotate first, crunch, come up with it, rotate, crunch, back. So we're gonna do that four more times. So there and back is one rep. So remember, you're really trying to flex, trying to round that mid back as much as we can. Good. Keep that chin tuck, keep that tension. If your hips are moving, lock them in, take a wider stance if we need to, we'll lock that core in. Go ahead and get a little bit of head movement. We are going to need those. We're going to come in, just hold that, come back, and so as I'm doing it, suck the hips, ribs are braced, drive that leg through the ground, keeping tension through the glutes, 
pull that knee in, put up on the short range of motion of that hip flexor, then we challenge it by you actively holding and squeezing on both sides. So we do that three or four times, depending on how you're feeling. We're gonna come in, make sure that those hips, again, don't flare, suck them in. We're gonna come up, hold, no hands, give yourself a two or three count. Come in, pull it in a little bit higher. Make sure you're squeezing through those bottom glutes. So challenge yourself three times. See where you're at, hold it, pull it in, hold it. What we don't want to see is you come up here, thinking we have that range of motion, and all of a sudden it drop back down here because we don't have that range. So we want to make sure we strengthen and build that range up. <laughs> right around. Good, so if you haven't switched legs yet, let's go ahead and switch legs. So you should feel a nice little stretch in there, just like if we're doing like that hip flexor stretch from here. You should feel a nice stretch because that means we're getting that activation of that hip and we're building that range. So you're owning that range. So now as you do that step up, it's not just flopping back down. Or even that squat as you have here, you have a little bit more reassurance that you have that range of motion to let those hips come backwards. If your hips are tight, it's another good way to kind of let them get loose. Good. Now from there, we're we'll bring that down a little quick. We go down, yes, from here, all the way to you, come up, reach that bottom flat arm, cross, here's the ground, come back up, and reach. So you're actively reaching towards that couch that's there, that wall, find something you see and actively reach. Towards it, you're gonna give me five on that side, and then we'll switch. At this, we're gonna open up that torso a little bit more. So right now we're really trying to open. Remember your lines go across your body. So put your left shoulder to your right hip, right shoulder, left hip. It's gonna be an X. As we're trying to get those patterns. Good. Palms facing the ground, fingertips reaching for that object that you see, trying to bring your shoulder your ear down the ground. Good. If that's your fifth one, go ahead and switch those sides. Make sure to get some movement. Nice. Good work, guys. Every time as you reach and you're thinking about that exhale, you're thinking about trying to let that body relax and get a little bit more. You're trying to challenge that range of motion right now. Good, now from there, we're gonna do just two more movements. So up here, get a little bit more spine. We're gonna make sure we're gonna pull it down to start. We're gonna make sure that those hips are coming down, set up underneath, pushing those palms away from the ground. Let those arms stay where they're at. Hips start first. Hips keep going until they get locked out, bring that spine with you. And then you start bringing up chest and shoulders with you. So when you're, when you're done, Stacking those shoulders on those fingertips, pulling those elbows into your hips, get back on fire as you go. Stuck in the loop, put that tail on, keep sucking and pulling. So you should be sucking and pulling, which should be lighting up your core once we're at that full range of motion here. Once we're at the opposite, just feel that mid back light up. So make sure you're trying to get those full ranges of motion of that mid-back and those shoulders. If you have lower back pain, we just gotta work on that lumbar spine. So go ahead and give me six, as slow and intentional as we can. So think if I had like a little NASCAR or a race car, and it's just going up and down your spine, wherever that car is hitting, that's where you want that spine to kind of move with you. Imagine if you have the mini band, that resistance, I'm trying to it's trying to pull your shoulders and back down to the ground. You're trying to push away from it. We're going to get that power push. You're going to get that whole body involved in it. So that's what we want. Good. I think we have one more to go. And then just a quick, another hip opener. Good. Once you finish that last one, we're going to stay in that position. 
We're going to start off single leg frog position. So left leg, like we finished yesterday's workout with, we're going to start it here. Push up position, foot out, we're going to hinge. Walk yourself forward, big deep breath in. As you come back, bring that exhale, driving those palms away from you, sinking those hips. Walk back, make sure those hips sink sucks. Good. Go ahead and get two more. And then you're switching those legs. One side might feel a little bit more stiff than the other. Remember, if you that end range, challenge it. Make sure we're breathing through. You're trying to relax that body so that your body's gonna give you more range of motion. It's tight because it thinks it needs to protect you. So we're trying to let that body know that we can get further than we are. Trying to gain that connection, trying to tell that body, mm -mm, we got more. Good. Let's go ahead and get one or two more, depending on if you're feeling tight, challenge it with two more, getting further and further. If you're feeling like I feel pretty limber, my hips are touching the ground, we ready. Once we get that last one and give me that thumbs up, we'll go over that block that we have for that full body workout today. Well, that was a very enthusiastic thumbs up, Alex. I like it. That was good. Mm -hmm. Got it. Lisa, are you ready? Tao, PJ, John, you ready? Good. All right. So yesterday we did leg raises and supermans getting more of that lower half of the body. Today we're gonna to focus on the shoulders and that mid back. So if I had a resistance band, so if I had a resistance band, give you guys a visual, my goal is to try to keep tension through the shoulders. So as we're going on the floor, we're trying, we're trying to pull that band apart, reach it back, control it, step back to the floor, and back up. Let's go to the other one, same thing. Fly away like the reverse fly. So as we're doing that on the ground, first one for both moves, you're gonna be three seconds apiece. So said we did yesterday. So make sure that you're able to lift mobility. Quads, glutes, feet tied through, we're keeping tension. We're gonna keep those arms out in a wide position. So the thumbs are up. We're gonna pull a little bit back and down. Elevate, come through, run that tempo, squeeze the legs, the booty, pull. Control that way down. There's no reason this. That's not us getting strength or control. So we make sure we come back and down. We elevate the elbows and back. Same thing with that reverse slide. We come through, control goes back and down. Pinch, control, pinch, control. All right, so we have those two shoulder and back movements. From there, we need to control that push up. So whether it's on from the knees, or the toes. I'm looking at the posture, I'm looking to control that movement in full range of motion. And we want to make sure that we're rotating those elbows, control the way back and down, and down to three, two, one. We elevate those hands, then we get that full push up plus. So, as I did, push that floor away, reset, control, elevate, full extension. Go to the toes. Get that full push. All right, so from there, we're going to pull all the way back, lift off. Once we get that thumb back down, explode the thumb up, way through. From there, challenging the shoulders a little bit. In that push up position, we go more of that bear crawl, come through, back to that plank, back and through. All right, so challenging those hips, those hamstrings, those shoulders, and those ankles. So if you drop to the knees, still coming through. So make sure we're pulling that belly button through the ground. Now from there, we go three steps out, three steps back into the lap, and we're all these are 30 seconds. So as we're here, shoulders are back and down. Knees, right below, stack the hips. From there, we go one, two, three. Come back, one, two, three. All right, so that's side view. Bring up that tabletop, stretch those hips, locked in. Come through, one, two, three. All right, get a little bit of bounce with it, just make sure those hips don't move with you. From there, 
Shoulders go back, step the hips, come through. Drop that, move, back, back. You want to get a little bit of momentum with it. Drop that hip, or just pull that knee across, or even mountain climbers. All still good, all right? Now, we have a little bit of that production going on. Let's go grip seat, pull away with that foot, grip seat, pull that knee away. Come through, you want to challenge. Pull that foot away like that. All right, so we just want to make sure we're getting some movement in there. Come through, pull away, back. So we will be going both sides. Then that final move. You get nice and low, challenging that range. Strengthening all that good stuff in those steps. We're going to challenge that range of motion of those ankles in those steps. All right, so remember it's Y raise. We're gonna go for that T raise or reverse fly. We have that eccentric push up plus. Last stop position, bear crawl, break dancers, curtsies on both legs, then that Cossack squat. All right, so each one of them is going to be 30 seconds a piece. It's all about that tempo. All right, all about that full range of motion, all about feeling the move. That's why we're here today. All right, so let's go ahead and find that flat position. So remember, you're trying to think about pulling that shoulder blade back and down, elevating the hands, controlled back down to the floor. Keep that tension for 30 seconds. Here we go. Three, two, one. 30 seconds starts now. So just find that tempo, find that control. Think about trying to pull that chest out, pull the shoulder blades back and down. Remember, you want that about that 45 degree angle from those ears. Fifteen seconds. Nice. See some bands. I see some good tension. Remember, squeeze those legs, squeeze your booty, squeeze your quads. You're trying to keep tension. Good. We're going for that T raise. Three, two. One, so we're making that T, arms or shoulder height. Keep that chest out. Try to, keep the, try to pull that chin up. Give yourself that view. Actively using that back. 15. Thumbs up to the ceiling. Try to call that cab. Going for that negative push up with that plus. Three, two, one. So either knees or the balls of your feet. Find me that control. Elevate those hands off the floor. And then we push off. So remember, all the way down, we're in that hand release push up. And then we get that full extension. Good, we have 10 seconds. Remember, I don't care if you get two. I don't care if you get three, 10. I want full range. I want us to feel that move. Going for bear crawls, lateral bear crawls, three, Two, one. So knees right below those hips. You're thinking knees maybe two inches off the ground. You're hovering, hips stay down. Give me that tabletop. I should be able to put my margarita on your back. What's the matter, Alex? Maybe a beer? 10 seconds. Big glass of wine. Right, Lisa? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. We got break dancers, three. Two, one. So remember, you can go for that atomic mountain climber or feet coming through. Try to stay stable on one side. Good. Nice. We have 10 seconds to go. We look fluid. Looks good. Three, two, one. We're up on our feet. We got that curtsy with abduction. So remember, if you want a little bit of that challenge, the minute that foot comes up, then kick out, reset, back. If you got that mini band, feel free to use that for down the knees. So as you pull away, we're getting that concentration on that abduction. 10 seconds, then we switch legs. Yeah. Three, two, one. Switch sets.
Good. Make sure we're not bowling. We want to see how low we can get, but make sure that front knee is pulling away from that big toe. Make those glutes work. 15. Nice. We have 10 seconds. Looks good, everybody. Three, two, one. You have classic squats. So feet wide, find that stability of that knee. Rotate that foot up to the ceiling, give yourself more range. Drive up, come through. Remember, I don't care how low you get, I just want control. And I just want to make sure we're doing things properly as far as that engagement. Another 10 seconds. Remember, we're wide. Three, two, one. Take a breather. Good. So all these moves, challenging that range of motion, challenging certain angles, which we don't normally get. So we have another 45 seconds, then we'll do it again. So remember, on those... Ones where we're going for that Y race or that T race. We stay locked in with the core, legs stay tension, actively trying to pull that chest out with those sexy shoulders. Come up, control. So it's gonna be not very big a range of motion, but we're really trying to pull those arms as far back as we can. Thumbs going to the ceiling. Make sure that mid back's activating if you don't feel it. Concentrate on it, squeeze there first, and then pull those elbows away. Just building that connection so we can get stronger. Once you feel that connection, you'll know when you're out of place. All right, here we go. We're going for those Y raises. Three, two, one. Here we go. Remember, all about that tempo. Thumbs are up at all times. It'll give you that better range of motion. 15 seconds. We have 10. Nice. Look a lot better than last round. Nice work. Switch into that T raise. Three, two, one. Arms fully extended out. Make that fist. Thumbs are up. Call me that cab. Straight to the ceiling. So those arms should be in total straight line across that body. Remember, you're making a T for Tyler right now. We have 10. Going for that push up. Three, two, one. So we're going all the way down. Give me that three, two, one. Hands come off the ground. Pinching those shoulder blades together and full extension. Good. Remember, the slower you go, the more control, the stronger we get in each increment of that push up. 10 seconds. Nice. Three, two, one. It's time for that blast off. Here we go. So find me that push up or that kneeling position. Stack those hands and then we shoot off, opening up those shoulders and those lats and then back to that. So just think it's a moving plank. 15 seconds. Good. Almost like a downward facing dog needs a plank. Pull that belly button in. Three, two, one. We have those break dancers. Stack those hands over or right below those shoulders. Stack that shoulder, get that full extension, get that stability for me. Good. 15 seconds. We have five seconds to go. Try to get me one or two more. Three, two, one. We're up for those curtsies with that abduction of that leg. Good. Focus on that tempo. Focus on the control of that hip. 15. Good. Even if we're here, if that leg's plugging us, and even if we're just wiggling that hip, this bottom hip, we're just trying to get range of motion in there. 
Switching sides. Three, two, one. Just remember, even if you're just working on gripping the floor, find that balance, find that stability of that knee. You just hinge and drive. I just want you to get power and stability from that hip. 15. Trying to build up that strength in each range of motion. We have 10 seconds. Three, two, one. We're in that classic squat. Set that up. Remember, rotating that opposite foot, changing the angle of that hip. Nice, we have 15. Three more on each side. That'll do it. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Nice and done. Just one more round challenging. Those ranges connecting is what we're looking for because once we get some mobility, we're going to connect a whole lot. So we just want to get that going now. Work, guys. Those push ups are real good. That's one of the hardest combinations, combinations of a push up you can do is that slow eccentric with that lift off and in that full range. You guys are doing it. That's good. We have 30 seconds. So remember, in this round, if you haven't been feeling those movements, think about really trying to squeeze, keep that tension to that body you're thinking. From here you're thinking, how far can I pull the shoulders back? How far can I lift off? And how far can I keep control? Same here. Pull back, mid backs engage, pull back, and control. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go, guys. Last four minutes. And it's all about getting that joint health, health of the back, spine, hips, all that good stuff. We have 15. Good. Sometimes the amount of reps isn't what we're looking for. Sometimes it's just getting better and getting better at the range. Three, two, one, T raise. Good. We have 10 seconds to go. Oh, that looks good. Three, two, one. It's that push up. So give me that three, two, one. Pinching those elbows back together. Then get that power. See how much momentum you can push away from the floor. Think you're out right now, you get the pandemic going on. Think about you're trying to push someone away that's sneezing and coughing. You don't want them near you. You're at a bar, someone's trying to hit on you, push them away. Come on, get aggressive with it. You have three seconds. Three, two, one. We have that blast off. So plank position into that downward facing dog variation. Lock it into those hips. Open up those hamstrings, open up that lower back. Good, try to keep those elbows extended, push that floor away, open up that shoulder, challenge it. You have 10 seconds to go. Get further than you think you can, unless you start feeling a little pinch or a pain sensation, then ignore me, but otherwise we're challenging it. Three, two, one, you have break dancers. Nice, palms stay locked into that neutral position, just getting that extension. Stability of that shoulder and the core. 15 to go. Good, five seconds. So last one on the floor. Three, two, one. We're in that curtsy. Just remember, if you're not feeling that movement, challenge this hip that's extended. Come out, and then just drop. Don't even need to touch the floor. But make sure that we're getting full extension here. Challenge, and then open that up. 
But 10 seconds to go. Three, two, one, switch sides. Good. Nice and done, 15 to go. You have 10 seconds. Three, two, one. It's your last one, it's your last 30 seconds. You got that Cossack squat. See how slow you can go, see how low you can go. Find a different way to challenge in the last two rounds. If you feel like you don't get much range in those squats, because we're blocked with those squats and angles, think about this, you can lean back and tuck those hips. See how far you can go in a better backward position. Three, two, one. Nice. Done, everybody. High five your neighbor, like that pretty Bunch style. Mm hmm. And now it's the fun part for me because I get to watch you guys hate me because I'm challenging your range of motion and control. Nice to done, everybody. All right, so at this point, if you have shoes on, take them off. I don't want them on. I want you barefoot. I want your shoes off, your socks off, if you got them, whatever. Get as barefoot as we possibly can. Oh, I like it, Lisa. Mm hmm. As you're going to yoga class right now. No one else's feet in there, so you can't steal anyone else's feet. This is your own personal time. All right, so multiple things we're going to go over right now. Like I said, we're gonna go from the feet up because one, everyone's feet are all jacked up because we wear shoes that are way too much padding. Two, everyone's starting to run right now because it's quarantine and we got nothing else to do. All right, so we're gonna start from the feet up, challenging, seeing where our range of motion is. Now, what we are going to do as a starter, we're gonna stand up. Now, this is where it's gonna be fun for me because it was fun for me when I took this certification because we all did the same thing because we concentrated way too hard on it. All right, so this is what's gonna happen. Within your feet, if you have arch problems, you have all these other things that maybe we're just disconnected to, again, because of our shoes, this is gonna help us kind of build that connection back up. So what I want you to do is if you're gonna take your palms, same thing with your feet, Imagine you're trying to grab a piece of paper that's stuck to the ground. I want you to try to take your toes and grab something with that arch. Not necessarily the toes, because I can pick up a pen with my toes also, but I want you to focus on trying to, if this is a piece of paper or a towel, I want you to try to arch that foot so that you're able to move that piece of paper or towel. All right, so as we're doing it, you can kind of already see if I'm doing my right foot, my toes are spread as wide as I can possibly get them. Then I'm trying to grip the ground and I'm trying to build that arch. So if you do it, my foot's going to be relatively flat at first. As I grab with the feet, I should be able to put my hand underneath the arch of my foot because I've then built up that arch. All right, so if you have arch problems, this might help a little bit as far as your knee maybe coming in on those squats. So as we do it, we're going to do both of them at the same time just so we can kind of connect with it. If you want to do one, then the other, also okay. All right, so remember, as we come through, we spread the toes as wide as we can because our shoes are crammed. Our toes like this, we're trying to get as wide as we can, and we're trying to grip the floor as much as we can, slowly relax them, and come back. All right, so we're going to do that for 30 seconds. We're gonna come in, we're gonna hold one 1,000, two 1,000, slowly bring it back out and grab back. All right, now I can't really see your feet, so I'm gonna trust you guys to really pay attention to it. So we're gonna come up, so for the next 30 seconds, we're gonna work on it, all right? Here we go. Three, two, one. Remember, you're slowly spreading those toes finding the grip on the floor, and you're slowly trying to bring that in as far as you can. It may even cramp up because it's something new. Once you get that one 1,000, two 1,000, we're slowly bring those hands or feet back out. You have 10 seconds. So even if you're just trying to build that up, squeeze and hold it for another five seconds. 
Good. Three, two, one. Go ahead and relax. We're going to do that one more time. We'll take 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So did anyone's feet just cramp up because they had no idea their feet could move like that? Hey, Tyler, are, are you heels on the ground the whole time? Yeah. So my feet, my feet are flat other than my arch. So my heels locked down, my toes are locked down. So as I'm here, I try to spread my feet, trying to cover as much surface on the floor as I can. Then I try to shrink it from my heel and the ball of my foot. I'm trying to keep the two contact points once I get to that part. So yeah, the heel, the foot, completely flat, covering as much surface as we can. So if I'm using a pad right now, this is my foot, I'm trying to go as wide as I can, and then trying to grip as much as I can. So it's building up the muscles. Is that a little bit better, Tal? Okay. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go again. Three, two, one. So even if you need to, focus on, squeeze that body, keep that tension in the legs, the glutes, the core. Keep tension upper body. Tell yourself where you're focusing that energy. And try to build that connection. 15. Ten seconds to go. If you want that challenge right now, think about trying to pull them in and squeeze for the next four seconds. Three, two, one. Nice. Alright, so if you guys have a pad, if you guys have a pillow, let's go ahead and make sure you grab that for your knees so don't just destroy it on the hardwood. What we're going to do is we're going to take it for a combat stretch. So something that also will limit our squats or lunges or day-to-day -day movements to so see the range of motion of our ankle. Right, so what we're going to set up is that combat stretch. So as I'm here, I'm going to keep that knee right below my hip. So just like if we were to stretch our hip flexor, we're now going to take it into our ankle. So as I set this up, we're going to set up grabbing the floor and I'm going to pull my toes to the ceiling. So bring that torso flexion. As I come forward, it's naturally going to come down because my range of motion or control. So here, I'm stuck on hips, keeping tension locked in the core. So I'm going to shift that weight on that front foot, actively pulling those toes away from the floor. So we're just coming in, you're squeezing, you're building up, so you can feel that front of that shin, you can feel your Achilles and that front of the chest, so I'll go through that heel into that arch as well, we come back. Right, so we're going to be going for 10 seconds forward. We'll come back for five, 10 seconds forward, five seconds back. We're going to do that three times on each side. All right? So remember, it's a 10 count. It's going to feel uncomfortable, but we want to make sure we challenge that ankle. If you feel like you get stuck or you're limited on squats and lunges, just we want to challenge it. All right? So remember, brace, lock those ribs, keep that tension, tension in the back, do the glutes. Pull those toes up to start. We're going to go for 10 seconds, pulling that toe in. Here we go. Three, two, one. Actively pulling those toes in. Maybe even put some little bit of pressure on that knee. Make sure we stay locked into neutral. And we're still pulling and come back. Okay, put the breathers. If you feel like you didn't get that far, we're going to two more times. Here we go. Three, two, one. One, pull that toe in. Make sure that knee is not falling inside that big toe. Pull that knee away. Pulling and release. Come back. Big deep breath in. Brace. Here we go. Last one. Three, two, one. Pull that ball of that foot as high up as you can. You can keep it off. Think about pulling those toes in. Good, and coming back, switching sides. All right, here we go. Suck those hips, brace that core, pulling those toes in, going forward. See how far you can go. One side might be further than the other. So when you do your lunges, do your squats, you may feel like your glutes, if something's working more than the other, it's about that control and range of motion. And come back. Breathe in. Keep that tension, lock that core in. Here we go, number two. Three, two, one. 
you want a little bit more of a challenge, swing that back leg around. Actively pulling. Three, two, one. Good. One more. Then you're going to try to squeeze something in your hand that's looking to pull away. You're going to squeeze, keep tension through those forearms in your body. Three, two, one. If I'm going to come by, I'm going to try to push you. Try to stay stable. You want that tension. Three, two, one. That's done. All right, so we're going to get two other movements still working our way up. Now, as we set this up, imagine if you're watching some kind of wrestling match, you're watching UFC, it's like that chokehold. All right, so as we come through, your right leg's going to be extended, heel's going to be on the ground, I'm going to come through my left arm, bring my left leg. From there, right arm underneath, you're going to put it right on your kneecap. All right, from there, all I'm doing is I'm making sure that my foot is rocking side to side like a windshield wiper, but not my hip or not my knee. I'm trying to make sure that's coming from that ankle and all the ligament centers in your bones doing the work going side to side and not coming from up here. All range of motion there because you don't control it. All right, so we're trying to go as far to one side as we can. And you're trying to make sure that bone in the front doesn't move. So you're thinking ankle. You're blocking that out. So it's left arm under the left knee pit. Come through onto your arm pit or your elbow. Hands blocking that out. Make sure that front bone is going to move. Right? So you're going to give me five in each direction. And as far as you can. So you get uncomfortable. So you don't use it. So five on each. Once you're done, switch sides. It's gonna feel weird. So remember, trying to choke underneath, come through, lock it in. You wanna be like right on that kneecap, right below it. You wanna make sure that that bone isn't moving. It's coming from the ankle. As far as you can, just like our wrist, should be able to get side to side motion. If it's not, if it feels limited, it's something to work on. Five in each direction, then we switch sides. Keeping tension through that body. Remember, when you're tense, you build more strength. You're more resilient. Good. Again, just like the knees, you may notice then those ankles, that's your problem spot, which is why your knee's bugging you. If your knees are bugging you and it's not your ankles, we got good range there. It's most likely coming from your hip. That knee is kind of that middle ground and we don't know which one it is causing that issue until we kind of explore it. Good. Once you get those five and five, give me a thumbs up. Good, all right. That feel a little weird? Getting that side to side windshield wiper? Because it's not usually your normal movement. All right, now from there, we're gonna still challenge that ankle. We're gonna go back to your left ankle. What we're doing, still locking that in. All I'm doing is imagine you have a pen on your toes and you're trying to make circles. So again, we're gonna go five on one, five on the other. If you prefer doing this standing, I'm okay with that too. I just want you to really get that range. So as I do it, I'm coming through, I'm pulling those toes in as far as I can, out as far as I can, back down, the side, up, down. Remember, you don't want that bone. We're trying to lock that in. Five and one, five and the other. If it's anything like mine, it's gonna sound just like Rice Krispie Treats, but it's okay, as long as it doesn't cause pain, it's just stuff we're working through. Remember, you got fascia, ligaments, tendons, you got a lot of stuff in there, and we're just trying to tell it, hey, we need more body control and more range of motion. Good. Five on one way, five on the other, and then we'll switch those legs again. Good. Really 
really trying to pull. So if it feels easy, you're not feeling those Rice Krispies, pull harder. Keep more tension in that ankle. See how far your ranges are. You want it where your ankle wants to move with you, but you're locking that out. So challenge that range. Again, just like we did earlier, you find a sticky spot, it feels, oh, I got some pain, work around it, go back. Make a little puzzle piece. Good, now from there, still working our way up, we're gonna go for the kneecap. So your kneecap should move freely, they should just hover around, and your body's a pulley system. So as we're doing squats, it kind of gives you more range, you get more range of motion if they work properly. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna extend those legs out and focus on your right first. So as we're here, you shouldn't lock that out. You want that leg extended. All right, so if you're squeezing, it's gonna be locked in. So I'm gonna do our squats and we hyperextend the quad and the knee. That's why we're starting knee pain. You can move from the glutes and the quad, you want to do that soft knee. So when we're here, that's extended, make sure that's not flat. As we're here, it's gonna feel weird, it's gonna feel sticky. Imagine if you're playing air hockey, it's what's gonna feel like as we're moving this around. So we're gonna take both thumbs, you're gonna push down, straight down towards the toes. All right, from there, you're gonna start pulling down at an angle, but still down. And then you're gonna take your thumbs, push straight to your side. Again, up at an angle towards you, the side, back down. Once you kind of find where your ranges are, if it feels like it's grinding, that's where we want to start trying to jump. Down, start moving it around another if you're flexed, it's not going to move. So keep that leg loose, play around with your kneecap and see where it's working, where it's stuck. You want it moving freely. Right, it's going to feel weird because we never do this ever. So find where it's stuck, find where it's not gliding as easy. Challenge that ring a little bit. If you've had any knee surgeries, you may move at all or not at all. You may move a lot, you may move absolutely none. We just want to try to get a little bit of movement in there. And then we're switch sides. Alright, so extend that left leg, make sure it's not flexed. Remember, we're going to start off making that circle. So if you're down, then follow a circle as big as you can. And as much as that will allow you to go, and then go the opposite one. So you can play any sticky spots. Front, back, side to side. Make it like a dance party in your knee. You have that drunk person in the middle of the dance club, all over the floor, the stick and everybody. You're trying to go all over, you're trying to find those sticky spots. But if you know what I'm talking about, there's always that drunk guy bumping into everybody. So I want that kneecap, I want it shifting as far different directions as we can. Good. All right, now from there, we'll work a little bit more on those knees and those hips. So again, if you have that mat, make sure we're still on it. Just like we would a normal knee tuck, we're gonna take it in that as well. So we go for those hip pumps. As we set this up, shoulders back, but I should be able to move your right to the thigh. So keep the tension, tucking, bracing the core. If your right knee stays down in that tabletop position, remember if your hips move, that means it's too far away from the press right now. So pull them down, set the hips, pull that knee as far as we can towards that forearm. Once you find a limitation, either those hips will become with you. So that hip flexor is not going to allow you to pull that knee in any further. That's where we stop. So remember, if this is tight, you're pull your hips in with you. So come in, tuck, come in from that position. The knee comes out like a fire hydrant. Go as far away from the floor in your corner as you can. Now instead of your toes having that bend, your kneecap now has that pen attached to it and you're going to draw a circle. So we're here, lock. Up, or up from there. Your knee makes that circle. You come in once with that forearm. You go back and around, right? That circle the opposite way. So up, keeping yourself as square as we can. 
going into those ranges of motion. We're gonna get four more, all right? So remember, back is flat, arms are locked, keeping tension. If I'm trying to shake you, you gotta lock it down like that. Imagine there's an earthquake and you're trying to stay rigid. You're trying to go as far range of motion as you can. Pull that knee in as far as you can. If you can go further, go further. If you can go higher with that knee, further back with that knee, challenge it. You won't know if you don't try. So just make sure those hips don't move with you. Remember, you're hitting that knee to that forearm, then you're going backwards. You're going both directions on this move. Good. From what I can see, I think we have one more on this leg. Uh, remember, really challenging, just like we would a lateral raise. I don't care what those hands are. Same thing with this. I don't care where your foot's going. I'm paying attention to your knee, painting the capsule of your hip. We're trying to get as much range of motion in there as we can. Nice. All right, once you finish that fifth one, we're switching sides. It's going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel your glutes activate. You're going to feel those abductors. You're going to feel those hips being in an uncomfortable state. That's good. You keeping tension in your body, also going to be uncomfortable. So breathe. Take breaks in between if we need to. Just make sure we reset. Don't let those elbows bend. Arms stay fully extended. Shoulders stay retracted. Sexy shoulders. Chest is out. Remember, free drinks means chest out. It goes for guys or girls. Good. Nice work. Five on that one. Once you're done, go ahead and look at me or give me a thumbs up. Feel free to give me the middle finger because I know it's uncomfortable. Good. All right, guys. Now, what we are also going to do from there, let's go ahead, go back into that frog stretch. So now that we got a little bit more movement, just like doing that single leg variation, some limiting factors, maybe your groin, your hips, your glutes, your hamstrings, your lower back. You gotta figure out what's not giving you that range, and we're gonna challenge you a little bit. So you're trying to actively get that external rotation, you're trying to pull those toes off the ground. All right, so you're going to be pulling away from the floor. From there, you're actively pulling those knees away and keeping those hips tucked as you come backwards. So if you're looking from this, remember, toes are going to come off the ground. You're going to pull those knees away. Hips stay tucked. I'm going to push myself into a deeper stretch, actively breathing, pulling those knees away, pulling those feet away. If you feel comfortable there, Reach those forearms. So imagine I'm trying to pull your belly button through a string, through your spine, and you're trying to keep those hips tucked. Now, once you find that spot, give me a head nod because I'm going to time this. So once you feel like, hey, that's my limiting spot, give me a head nod because I know your hands are busy. We got no head nods, so I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. You're going for 20 seconds right now. So you're actively pulling those toes away, pulling those knees away. Tuck those hips and then try to push and sink your hips towards your heels like we would a squat. Another 10 seconds. It's going to be uncomfortable. Three, two, one. Slowly walk yourself back out to a little bit more comfortable position. We're going to do that one more time. It's gonna be uncomfortable. This one, I'm gonna challenge you a little bit more because we're gonna find that spot again and we're gonna actively try to move those legs with us. It's gonna be fun. All right, so real quick before we go back, the difference on this variation is I'm not challenging a little bit more of what the elbows would do with that rotation of that hip. So as we try to sink into that position, we're not gonna bring it down the forearms, we're gonna stay in that plank position, we're going to tuck those hips, and I'm going to try to actively move both of those feet and knees to get more rotation in those hips. So try to sink, get as far as we can, alternating for 20 seconds. 
This is your last move. So once you finish those 10, it looks like we did. We're going to get into it. Remember, whatever leg you just did, let's flip around. So again, as all of us are, we're a little bit in balance as far as that range of motion, mobility, stability, and even strength. So if you're, for me, I'm a little bit more on the side of this one because my right hip is a little bit more tight. My right knee's bugging me, so that makes sense. It's coming from my hip. Here, as I get back to center, I'm more focused on staying center than that front leg right now. I walk full, but my left leg's already in more range, so I'm focusing on that hip. Once you drive that hip, drive it through, drive the heel through the knee, through. keep tension on that back side. So you just square as you can that front leg. going to lift that foot. Even if you're just holding it up, I want you to actively think about trying to pull away from that hand. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly bring that back down. Slowly release that body from its tension. They start cramping up for your fighter. We don't have that connection. Just one more. And you guys can get your fight. All right? Big deep breath in. Get that exhale. One more. Breathe in. Get that exhale. Pull your shoulders down. Pull that rib cage in. Keep that core locked. Arms through this floor, keeping tension, driving that leg through, the that leg off. Five, four, squeeze harder, three, harder, two, one. 
Nice and done, everybody. Nice work. Whose hips just lit up on fire? Anyone's hips just look like their glutes just light up? Some of us, yes. Okay, good. If it didn't, it means one of two things. Either one, you have a really good range of motion there, or two, that means I can push you harder next time I see you in person. So I'll know. I'll know who just said yes and who said no. I will be seeing you guys in person soon. All right? So remember, tomorrow you guys are going to have <laughs> Dazzle. <laughs> tomorrow you guys are going to have Darren. Remember, Sunday you guys have Liz. So remember, just like today we had mobility in a full body workout. Tomorrow, full body. Then you're going to have a little bit more yoga Pilates style with Darren. On Sunday, you have that recovery yoga with Liz. We're still going to keep these going. Um, if you guys have more mobility questions, remember, you have Jeff, uh, you have myself, Andrea here has it as well. But everyone here is super knowledgeable about range of motion control mobility. But if that's something you guys feel like is a limiting factor on running, squats, just day to day, you sit at a desk, we're all sitting on our couch and at home now. If something feels off, reach out, show it, we'll show us, send us a video, say, hey, this is bugging me. We can kind of assess it from your movements or where things are. So even if you don't, even if we're doing these videos or you're doing home workouts, report yourself if something feels off. Then look at it, see how you're gonna adjust. Because we don't know if we can't see it. All right, so it's good to kind of know where you're at on all aspects. So if something's bugging you, it might be your form. It might be something just isn't working, it's dysfunctional right now, but we can always adjust. All right, guys, have a good weekend. I appreciate you guys coming. It's Friday, I'm throwing off because I thought it was Thursday again, but we did it. Go enjoy, it's sunny out, it's supposed to be 91 day. Have a great weekend. See you guys on Thursday, for Thunder Thigh Thursday, workout, twerk out, and toweling the field Thursday. Bye well, guys, have a great weekend. Can, can I say one thing to you? Yeah, John, what's up? So on that last one that we were doing, mm -hmm. it was totally fine when I was lifting up my left, let see, left foot. When I did okay. my right foot, I get that pain in my lower back. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Do you feel like you're upright? Do you feel like you're hinged over? You know, I might be hunched over a little bit. Okay. When I, when I, I had been working with, um, Jeff on this lower back, I've had lower back issues for years. Okay. And he had said that when I'm in that 90, 90 position, I should lean over more. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem, put so much pressure on the. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the more forward you are, the less pressure you're going to get in that lower back, the yeah. more you stand up. Yeah. Direct pressure straight down. Exactly. Um, now, when you guys, when you and Jeff were working together, did it seem like it was coming more from the glutes or just lower back? Did you guys going to assess that or? Oh, it's, I mean, here. Please like stand up. Where's the camera? Right. right in there. Oh, yeah. That's the fun spot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I've, how often do you do like those butterfly bridges or cat cows and stuff like that? Say that again. I'm sorry. There's a vacuum over here. How often do you do the, the cat cows or those frog pumps? Yeah, I, I, I tend to do um, a stretching routine every morning and I try to do, uh, that includes cat cows. Good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that's fine. Yeah. You know, if you got anything, that's, that's great. Okay. All right. Yeah, I would say um, anything that Jeff's given you is always good. Yeah, um, yeah. He knows his stuff. And then um, just some things that I will do, like if my tailbone, like right in that area of sciatica is starting to bug me, um, what I'll do is I'll do those frog pumps like we did yesterday, or if you, whenever we take my uh, Thursday classes, if you try to pull those knees away, feet are flat together, and we're trying to get that bridge up. But we're yeah. just getting that, it's like this one right here. We're just kind of be extending that lower back. So we're here, together, driving up. That should also kind of hit right where you're feeling it. And then we want to make sure we're resetting, tracing that forward in, actually pulling that forward. And something like that might help yeah. as well. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a great, great idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a great way to kind of get some more range of motion, putting that spine kind of back in neutral, building up that right connection. It's yeah. one of my favorite things to do before I do any kind of like leg day. Okay. Good. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. You're welcome, John. Have a great weekend. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye.